Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, and welcome to Knowledge Talks. A weekly edutainment and knowledge sharing program aired live specifically to share with you topics that contribute knowledge to the society. Every week, Knowledge Talks hosts and invites guests that are experts, professionals, and leaders from the field that bring wealth of knowledge to you. Knowledge Talks also highlights and promotes talent in the country that contribute knowledge and success to the nation. This program, ladies and gentlemen, is a weekly session that I will have with you every Tuesday at 5 p.m. I'm Khalil Barwani along with our studio engineer DJ Safiya for an hour bringing you free knowledge at your doorsteps on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Okay, stay tuned after this music break for today's interesting personality and today's interesting knowledge topic. Welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Farah Khilal Al Barwani, along with our studio engineer, DJ Sophia, with you here live today on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Now, the way you manage yourself and other people's emotion can really make a difference to how you engage with people and your relationships in general. Now, the question is, how do you know and how do you do it? With the awareness of social emotional intelligence, you can surely know how to manage yourself and other people's emotions indeed. Now, what is social emotional intelligence? And how can you benefit from the learning is the subject today here at Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest today is an experienced and certified trainer in social emotional intelligence. MashaAllah. The question is, who is our guest? Mr. Hassan Fadl. A coach, a trainer and professional with many hats. MashaAllah. Ghassan is a TEDx speaker, social emotional intelligence expert, human development and SME consultant and coach, co-owner and business development manager of Andalusia SPA, founder and member of Oman Entrepreneurs Network, co-founder and president of Omani Student Society, New Zealand and our aircraft engineer. Today, Ghassan is with us here to speak about the social emotional intelligence and how can you benefit from the same. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ghassan, how are you doing today? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Tariq. I'm doing fine, thanks. It's lovely to have you here on the show today, Ghassan. It's lovely to have to be there to be here today. Thanks, thanks in, for the invitation. In, in, in fact, Ghassan, I have read about you. I have seen the work you do, uh, um, and and I very much look forward also to attend one of your sessions as well. That I heard, mashallah, they are fantabulous. I'll 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 be more than honored to have you on board. Um, actually running one in Salala this uh, after, after tomorrow actually. MashaAllah, uh, MashaAllah. And uh, last time we ran, ran an introduction, introductory session, it's always very active. It's very, very, very fantabulous as you say. MashaAllah. So you will be going to Salala after two days? Yes. And uh, where in Salala? Actually, uh, it'll be at the uh, Intercity Hotel. Okay. Um, uh, it's a more of a community or, uh, effort working with a community organization they called Mashroom Mustaqbal Future Project. Okay. And uh, we're working on helping uh, basically the community develop skills. Um, students uh, have better study skills. Professionals develop their professional skills. 
And part of what we're doing is helping them develop their leadership skills okay. through social emotional intelligence along other workshops. Mashallah, so. mashallah. May Allah bless you as well. There's nothing like developing uh, the, 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 the people in society and you are among the people who is doing that and that's hat off my friend. May Allah bless you diamond inshallah. May Allah bless us all. May Allah bless. It's going to be uh, day after tomorrow. Is, the, if, is it open to everyone to attend? Uh, it's an open invitation. I'll probably send you, send you uh, basically the brochure of the event for people who are interested. Inshallah. It'll be in Arabic this time. Okay. And uh, actually, I'm flying off tomorrow morning, okay. delivering three workshops. One on uh, power of reading, one on social emotional intelligence, and another on uh, business model canvas for entrepreneurs. Uh, so it's three days full, f- packed with a uh, lot of activities. So Mashallah. we'll see how it goes. Yeah. With the same entity, same organization? Or yes, organization? the same organization. Uh, okay. Trying to help basically the community there. Yeah. Very good, very good. So the three subjects are, one is power of reading. Yes, so that will okay. be uh, general to the public, free for all. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other two will be paid just basically to cover the costs of uh, the bookings and halls. Um, so that's like 10 riyals, which okay. is uh, minimum uh, charge. Yeah. And uh, the se- power of reading is basically a mix of showing pe- students the, the value of reading and okay. the value of reading, wa- uh, developing habits like uh, reading one hour a day, investing into your training and self-development, and then uh, also giving them a crash course in speed reading, which would help them uh, basically do m- more work in less time. And be able to be more productive in their studies and also uh, develop themselves through reading. Awesome. There's, that's a very, very good topic. I wish I could have uh, attended. But if you do have a session in Masqat or if you do have a session again in Salala in, in the future, I will definitely be more than pleased to attend. Um, I'll, I'm looking into having uh, some sessions in Masqat soon. Um, uh, we'll arrange that and definitely, definitely let you know. Inshallah. Yeah. Power of reading. Uh, uh, if you could tell, tell us more about it. You know, the importance of reading is very big. There's no doubt about yeah. it. In fact, that was the first thing that the Rasul Prophet exactly. Muhammad has been uh, told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Iqra. Yeah. And then it was emphasized three times. Iqra, Iqra, Iqra. The importance. Tell us more about yeah. the, 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 the this course and what will you be covering during this Basically, session? the interesting thing about reading, um, uh, even the word Iqra in Arabic, you see, Iqra, um, each letter in the Arabic uh, language has a meaning. And the um, if we go to the root letters, um, there is a connotation of, uh, especially with the letters Qaf, Qaf is uh, one of the hardest and Qalqala um, uh, uh, letters in Arabic, which which has a ringing or a, a vibration sound and a hard vibration sound, and gives the connotation plus the R or plus the Ra, it gives that vibration. Where when reading, there is that going back and forth, back and forth. There's energy. There's uh, transmission of information, mm. just like radio waves. You're transmitting information from the author to the reader and the receiver plus that there has to be that self-reflection and going back and forth on what you're reading and reflecting on the ideas that you're reading where until you reach to a conclusion with the letter hamza a, mm-hmm. which is where you're supposed to form a conclusion and arrive at truth and come out with something that would self-develop you and we always try to start the course with with that with that understanding the meaning of, of the word, the word mashallah. and then we start getting into the value of reading how reading would develop you socially emotionally spiritually and on different levels uh, we then later on look at uh, looking at it from the personal uh, and professional way how that would impact your self-development and how would that also lead to making you an, an expert uh, a subject matter expert by developing a habit of reading one hour a day later on uh, after that we look into basically how would reading make you richer and so reading actually does make you oh richer. indeed uh, later on once we finished covering the value of reading we go into uh, a crash course and speed reading and we try to simplify speed reading there are a lot of techniques but there are the, you can basically distill it down into a number of uh, uh, three techniques that you can use and just understanding how your mind works and how reading works that uh, by changing and modifying how you read a little will make you actually a faster reader and make you at least double your reading in, in 10 minutes. Masha, uh, mashallah. Uh, that's a very, very uh, important subject, uh, uh, 
brother Ghassan and, and of course there's no doubt uh, uh, they say العلم سلاحك I mean the, the education is your, your weapon and uh, and uh, this is definitely the need uh, uh, in the society for people to learn uh, about reading and of course to, to in- enrich themselves with the knowledge that is out uh, uh, there uh, as they say uh, you are what you read do you agree on that? exactly exactly and I mean I didn't arrive at social emotional intelligence if it wasn't for reading and that's where I managed to develop more in, in the area of social emotional intelligence I had that focus on the social aspect as opposed to the total look at uh, uh, emotional intelligence where we found and uh, through a lot of research we find that um, most successful people have developed high levels of social intelligence and the ability to navigate through the different social scenarios and be able to uh, achieve success through the various scenarios and um, it was uh, through the writings of uh, people like Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outliers and um, uh, Daniel Goleman Emotional Intelligence Emotional Intelligence at Work and uh, def- deciphering that code and coming up with the social emotional intelligence as um, my own uh, work uh, it's basically a mix of readings of uh, people of uh, who wrote about success people like Stephen Covey um, uh, the work in neuro-linguistic programming also all these things came uh, I tried to distill those things into and package them into social emotional intelligence something that people can use practically instead of going to a lot of theory and getting lost through the theory okay, okay mashallah so uh, today uh, our subject is on social emotional intelligence uh, and we would uh, of course we're going to look into the meaning and the importance if you share in few words what is social emotional intelligence? <coughs> uh, social emotional intelligence. I mean, um, social emotional intelligence is the branch of emotional intelligence, but which focuses on the social aspect. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at un- understanding other people's emotions and how to manage those relationships and those emotions in those relationships. Um, we found that in order for uh, for people to achieve a higher level of success and personal success, there are certain habits that you can develop for your own personal success. They are habits of self-discipline. But once you want to really be successful at a larger scale where you're working org- in organizations, whether you're working in uh, community organizations or working in the public, whether you're a leader or a team worker, you have to interact with people and humans are social beings. So it is really important for you to understand relationships and how they uh, how they form. Um, there is a lot of emphasis on communication. Virginia Satya says that communica- uh, relationships are based on communication. So there is focus on communication and uh, there is also focus on uh, developing skills on how to manage, um, uh, how to uh, basically deal with others and how to uh, achieve a win-win outcome, how to achieve uh, scenarios where people would uh, listen to you and people would actually not comply but people would want to work with you and respect you as well and respect you at the same mm. time and there is and all this work is basically based on one main principle which is achieving trust whether subconsciously or consciously and uh, that's what social uh, intelligence is all about it's about gaining people's trust and being able to build on that trust for for you to reach to an end Okay, I've seen these terms a lot, social intelligence, and you also see on the other side, uh, 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 emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Same, difference? Um, You see, emotional intelligence, you may say, is the bigger umbrella. Where uh, I mean, um, uh, scientists and uh, psychologists, when they started looking at um, and trying to study what makes successful people successful, um, they first went in the early 1900s in the industrial age. Um, They tried to come up with a way of studying what makes people successful. They found out that the theory was IQ. They came up with IQ testing and um, to measure intellectual abilities and to and they thought that this that they would be able to prove a relationship between IQ and success. But however studies have shown that uh, the higher the IQ does not guarantee success and there were many cases where people with very extremely high IQ were, did not end up being very successful. Um, later on they went into studying personality testing. Uh, Freud and others worked on developing personality testing and personality types, the 16 personalities and My- Meyer-Briggs systems. And um, again they could not find 
a real relationship between personalities. They found that, okay, there are different personalities. People are different. But there is no one specific type of personality that guarantees success. Later on, however, they found that there's something missing in the equation. They found that emotional intelligence, the ability to actually connect with others, understand your own emotions and managing them, understanding other emotions and ma managing them, is what will guarantee success. Um, what they what they found, however, that the there is a personal part, which is understanding your own emotions and uh, how to manage those, and then there is that social part where you're dealing with others and that's the part where you leverage your success that's the part where you're working with others and that's the part where you're reaching to a wider audience or a wider group of people and um, making that uh, ripple effect as a leader or as, or as an influencer okay. and that's why we talk about social emotional intelligence uh, specifically as opposed to the bigger umbrella which is emotional, emotional intelligence. intelligence tell me one thing what is the relationship between social intelligence and success before that if you can just go one step back and uh, 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 define success in your terms yeah. success you see success it's, it's it's different success to different people is is, uh, is always different I mean um, uh, success is, uh, is, is a deeper concept. We cannot really define success as an... Uh, some people would see it as wealth, as having a lot of money. Uh, others would see success as uh, helping as many people as possible. Um, uh, to me, success is um, being able to achieve a higher purpose, something higher than yourself, being able to uh, reach uh, self-actualization and Maslow's hierarchy of needs and being able to find your purpose in life and fulfill that purpose. Um, during do While you're doing that, you're basically trying to um, reach out to as many people, help as many people and achieve certain personal goals on the way. So success is a journey as opposed to success being an outcome. As uh, I think it was Plato who said that uh, excellence is a habit it's not an end so therefore we i look at success as a habit as opposed to being uh, uh being just an end mm. so it's more of an attainment or achievement and it's 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 different from one person to another exactly success it's exactly it's not yeah. everybody is the same thing success is in the eyes of the beholder you yeah, uh, say, yeah yeah yeah, it's like the beauties in the eyes of the world. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you define the relationship then between social intelligence and success? You see, where, uh, when we looked at success, I mean, again, if we're looking at uh, success being in the eyes of the beholder, I mean, again, uh, for you to achieve certain amount of success or to achieve certain outcomes, you need to, most of the time, have to deal with people. Um, whether your goal is achieving a lot of wealth um, through trade, then you have to deal with customers, you have to deal with organizations, you'll need to deal with your own employees. Uh, whether your success is um, having uh, the, I mean, being the best father or the f best mother, then you have to deal with your children. Uh, whether your success is spiritual, you have to deal with your brother, uh, with your other fellow human beings um, and on your spiritual journey. So there is a lot of interaction with other humans. So it is essential, it's important to have that um, grasp on how to deal with others in the best manner possible in order for you to achieve success. It is a facilitation. It's a tool that helps you basically achieve your outcome. But True. it's not an outcome on its own, as you say. It's, it's very interesting what you're saying, uh, Hassan, is that because sometimes you can find someone who is very, very skilled, very, very good, but has zero attitude. Exactly. Say you don't want him to. You don't work with this guy, and even if exactly. if he's Superman. I mean, say no, sorry, you're not good. I don't uh, want you to tell, work with me. Tell me about it. Yeah, um, it I actually, and I actually talk a lot, a lot about these uh, similar cases in uh, the workshop and the co workshops and courses that I uh, give. And it's actually, I've seen a lot of scenarios. And I've worked with many scenarios. And a classic example is you find this with a lot of engineers and a lot of scientists. Um, uh, I always use the example from the uh, American Big Bang Theory show, uh, Dr. Sheldon Cooper. Uh, and it's a classic example of someone who's very detached, very logical, uh, but very detached from emotion yeah. and who's awkward socially. And Ouch. here's where he struggles on his daily, uh, daily life and it shows that struggle. But again, you can see that that example at different 
shades. I mean, it's it's not always that extreme, mm. but you'll find that people have certain struggles. I mean, uh, I've seen many engines being an engineer and working with a lot of engineers. You see a lot of people who are like that. They're A plus students at university or at uh, uh, at school. Yeah. But when it comes to group work, uh, having to work in organization, having to work with a team, they tend to struggle. Um, they don't have the necessary basic tools they require for communication, mm-hmm. being able to understand uh, and decipher that social code, understanding what's socially acceptable and what's not socially acceptable and how to work with your peers in the best manner possible. Uh, so there is that example and that's what we're, we're, we're what uh, an example of how that works and and, and that's very very painful if you notice uh, 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 and then because not many people are educated how to be socially aware or social intelligence as exactly. you've mentioned or emotional exactly. intelligence exactly and I that's mean, the consequence they have exactly because there a lot there's a lot of emphasis on those technical skills uh, technical skills amount to only 15% of your success um, the other 85% of your success is made of your p- on and based on your personal skills. Uh, IQ only contributes to 4 to 10% of people's success as yeah. per research as reported by Goldman. And it, it's it's uh, sad that most people and unfortunate that most most of us and even when it comes to hiring um, most organizations would focus on those that technical aspect and not focus on the personal social aspect. I look very much forward to speak about uh, the tools and how can people come socially aware. We're going to take a quick break right now and revert back to our exciting discussion today. Welcome back to Knowledge Talks ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host Tariq Hilal Al Barwani along with our studio engineer DJ Safiya with you here today live on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Very, very exciting discussion we have today with Mr. Ghassan Fadl, who is a coach, a trainer, and a professional with many hats, mashallah. Uh, before the break, we spoke about the social emotional uh, intelligence and, and the definition and its importance and how it impacts one person to another and how it can lead a person who is aware about the area and the field into becoming uh, very successful. Uh, Ghassan. Mashallah, mashallah. You, uh, you, 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 you've shared fantastic. Uh, even during the break when we were talking together, I've got a lot of learning from you as well. Oh. So I'm, I'm looking forward for the next session that you, uh, please send me the, uh, the invitation so I can attend. Definitely, definitely will do. So. Don't forget, yeah. me shouldn't be that you're <laughs> no, attending. Come on. Part you, of, you'll sorry, be, man. You'll we be on my quick seat. dial list now. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. Now. Ghassan, we go, you explained about social uh, emotional intelligence, the importance, the definition, and how it can impact uh, people as well. Now, let's talk about how can people apply it. Mm-hmm. So, we're looking at the tools that are used in social emotional mm-hmm. intelligence. Uh, when it comes to tools, there are a collection of tools, strategies, techniques that are used. We, when I normally talk about it, I try to talk about, uh, first give the, um, uh, the idea and the concept of the emotional bank account which was developed by uh, Stephen Covey. Okay. The emotional bank account is basically the understanding that your relationships with others is like bank accounts. You're opening bank accounts with each person that you work with. And the more credit that you put into that bank account by doing nice things to that person, um, the more that person will be likely to like to work with you. Mm-hmm. And um, basically, by having more input and working, developing that relationship, and investing in that relationship, the better the relationship would be, and that would help you whether it's a work professional relationship, whether it's a personal relationship at home. These, this is the this is the concept that you work with. What happens is, is sometimes in certain relationships, there are a lot of withdrawals, things like um, uh, negative uh, negative experiences or uh, even having to ask people for favors these are withdrawals mm-hmm. and the more you withdraw the less credit you start having the thing is what you have to pay attention to is the more credit the better the relationship the less credit the relationship becomes shaky you don't want to get to a, to a point where you close down your whole account and you get blacklisted because you're overdrafted a lot already yeah. um, so there's that concept of emotional bank account We also talk about three habits of public victory. Um, things like creating a win-win situation. We talk about um, uh, active listening and synergy. How can you 
basically work with these things and we teach an active listening technique which we'll talk about later on maybe uh, about the Islam technique that's an amazing technique whenever I teach this whenever we do the exercise there it's uh, there are screams in the room <laughs> wow. and, 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 and you I'll, and I'll tell you later between us I, I look forward <laughs> to scream too <laughs> ladies and gentlemen we're accepting calls on two four six zero two zero five eight I repeat again that's two four six zero two zero five eight Hassan is here and very much looking forward to your questions now uh, uh what i would like to also know um Hassan, is 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 with the social media today and these tools making people connected digitally what is the impact of social intelligence you see social media unfortunately um it's it's bringing people it's getting people more connected but at the same time it's getting people a little bit farther apart because of technology um you see it's a double-edged sword i mean depends on how you use it we have to use it responsibly the thing with social media is it's uh, especially impacting the younger generation these days the younger generation is becoming more comfortable using social media to interact with others mm -hmm. however nowadays some of them are starting to lose on their social skills on developing those social skills and you notice uh, children are not playing outside together anymore they prefer to play multiplayer games online mm -hmm. but when it comes to the real interaction a lot of them have, have started losing a lot of their so social skills this has become very worrisome by the way it that is. Is social is. media becoming and making people less social when they come to the real world exactly I, I mean you can go into a grown-up scenario where people are having dinner together at a restaurant and everyone is holding their phone and looking at their phones while well, they're missing out a big chance of actually humanly connecting with each my other my god and uh, i can see that a lot man and it happens a lot we're all guilty of that at a point uh, at, 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 at a level but uh, we, we really need to pay attention there. yeah no that's very good one. we're going to take a call right now uh, uh hassan uh, hello hey Tarek. hi welcome welcome salam it's jimmy Jimmy, how are you doing? Yeah, a long, a long time no hear your voice. Oh yes, it's every Tuesday, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, re I remember hearing you a long time ago, maybe three, four years ago, right? Oh yes, it's yeah, been, yeah, it, we, days yeah. are passing very fast, my friend. How are you doing today? Good, good, good. No, well, I mean, I'm just calling to say hi. Really, just glad to hear you guys on the radio having some really great programs out there. Thank you, thank you very much. And Hassan yeah. is here with me today uh, on on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Okay, all right, yeah, thanks. Nice speaking to you. Okay, all right. Bye-bye. 2460 Hassan is with me here today on Knowledge Talks. And we have a caller online as well. Hello? I guess uh, we've lost it. Hello? Hi, Tarek. Very high. How are you doing? I'm doing well. This is Najwal Kindi. Najwal Kindi, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. I hope you've been enjoying the interview. I just am a very big fan of this topic. I don't know if you can tell. I'm so excited about it. And uh, I'd like to uh, say hello to you and uh, Engineer Hassan. Thank you. Hello. And I was hoping to, you know, share a little of... Uh, what I know about this, when I had a little experience about uh, emotional intelligence mm -hmm. uh, in one of, uh, in previously in one, a phase of my job, a previous job that I had, mm -hmm. and I thought it's a good opportunity to get uh, to share it and get your input and your uh, opinion about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what I have to say. Go Please ahead. do. Go ahead. Um, uh, in in part of uh, a previous job that I had, I was uh, working with. Um, healthcare mm -hmm. and uh, and one of the major challenges we had is you know we had very um, you know intelligent and uh, very um, mm -hmm. unique uh, healthcare team however uh, in a survey that we have done with the mm -hmm. patients we found that you know they were uh, not uh, very happy with the communication skills mm -hmm. and um, in a number of, uh, you know, um, uh, sitting together with the healthcare team, we found that emotional intelligence, you know, for some people it's uh, God given. Some people are just like naturally very uh, connected to other people. Mm -hmm. And others mm -hmm. are, 
you know, they find it very difficult to 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 connect, you know, emotionally yeah, with yeah. Uh, with uh, patients or with customers or mm. anybody else. So, in in so what we did is we uh, we started doing a lot of reading. So I I did a lot of reading in terms of emotional intelligence in mm. hospitals and with uh, with uh, amongst healthcare workers and uh, patients mm-hmm. and um, the tool that I, I found that is, uh, uh, could be very uh, impactful is uh, you know the way uh, the strategy of um, connecting with a patient mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, you initially start to connect with them emotionally so your first statement exactly. mm-hmm. with uh, with a patient or with anybody else, would be confirming that you either understand how they feel exactly. or you know you see what they're saying mm-hmm. so you connect with them emotionally exactly and then the second phase is you give in the information or the instruction or your message whatever you wanted to say mm-hmm. and then you close uh, the conversation emotionally again mm-hmm. To, to reconfirm that you mm-hmm. you know you know you can do it um, Uh, we sure you're you'll be better or mm-hmm. you'll be going to do great so you open with the heart mm-hmm. something that reaches the heart and then say your message that could be something technical or something mm-hmm. very medical something engineering or something that is mm-hmm. whatever message that you want to see and then you close it up with an emotional uh, sentence Uh, closing that reaches the heart again mm-hmm. so I mm-hmm. just wanted to know uh, Hassan's opinion of this yeah. uh, conclusion that I came up with from the readings that I had yeah now it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned that uh, I mean emotional intelligence and, and being able to connect with your with your patients is very crucial in the medical field um, mm-hmm. uh, it's 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 very interesting you mentioned this it was supposed to actually be delivering also a workshop for Uh, the Ministry of Health on this. Yeah. Um, it's very important mm-hmm. in the medical field to uh, have the skill of rapport building, which is one of the tools. There are a lot of techniques for rapport building, which is basically establishing subconscious trust with the with your patients. Um, in the medical field, your patients are, uh, you know, they're coming to you normally to discuss an illness. It's something very personal to them. They will not share it with normally with anyone so there's uh, there's huge importance for you to actually connect with them make them feel comfortable make them feel that you understand and make them feel that uh, i'm here to help you I'm, i'm i understand i'm here for you and i really care uh, there was a study mm. made for uh, basically medical professionals in the states once uh, by an insurance company and they wanted to see which doctors would normally get sued in case of a, a, a medical mishap and um <laughs> and unfortunately um although uh, the study showed revealed that um, normally specialists and people senior doctors special special doctors would and consultants would normally be more likely to be sued than family doctors the reason being is normally family doctors are on a regular interaction with the patient they're normally the jolly guys they're normally the the the, the p- people who establish that long relationship um They they ask you how you doing. They um, how's the family going. They they know you the family inside out most of the time. While with the specialists, they're they're the technical people. They are the people who actually went there, and they normally um, uh, you'd see them like the engineers. And because of that, and normally because of the the uh, patient getting to them at a very late stage of the illness, uh, and because they haven't estab- and the, because of the patient not having established a long relationship with them. they normally like the family doctors more than the specialists by that time and they'd go like i prefer to sue the specialist although he didn't do anything wrong but they'll be more likely to sue the the specialist although there has been some wrong done um, at certain cases with the general doctor this is not an uh, this is an ex- uh, this is an extreme example of course but this is this is what a uh, research uh, showed which basically alluded to the importance of establishing that relationship with the patients uh, what we found that 
in the medical field it is important for you to develop certain st strategy strategies of um, uh, communicating with your customers making them feel comfortable having uh, building establishing that initial trust and report subconsciously and consciously um, as you mentioned that's a great strategy starting with something emotional connecting with them emotionally then giving getting into the technical or the uh, medical uh, details and then closing out with something emotional that would actually register with them deeply and profoundly and that actually sends a great message of I care and I'm positive that you go to uh, that you're going to get well and this would really help the the morale of the patients and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we May hope that we hope that sorry I'm still on the line <laughs> yeah no it's all right <laughs> Yeah. So I, I actually use that tactic with everything now. So mm -hmm. when I talk to uh, when when I talk to, for example, my children, mm -hmm. and for example, if I'm if I'm not happy about something, or mm -hmm. so I first uh, confirm that okay, I understand. I've been you know I've been a young girl one day. You know, mm -hmm. I know what you're feeling, but. You know, you shouldn't be doing this and this and that. And then we close it, but I love you, you exactly, know, exactly. and uh, yeah. with an emotional like uh, sentence. So exactly, I think exactly. it, it was very applicable with me with uh, a lot of other scenarios exactly. other than healthcare. So. Mm -hmm. So I think it really worked with me. Exactly, <laughs> and that's that's and that's what it's all about. I mean, that uh, we have to understand that humans dealing with humans is not dealing with machines. Dealing with yeah. machines is like uh, one plus one gives you two. Dealing with humans, one plus one gives you a variety of options depending on the mood on the day. <laughs> so <laughs> you you really need to understand that humans are different. Humans have emotions. Yeah, we need definitely. to really reach out to those emotions because they are what sometimes would either make give you. Th one plus one equals two, or would give you even ten. I mean, it depends on how good are you at reaching out to people's potential in uh, potential and being yeah. able to maximize that potential, that outcome through reaching out and to their hearts and unlocking the uh, locks of their hearts. So I just have one request before I go. There are, there are like some very difficult people that I think this works with the people who are quite emotional and who appreciate. There are some people who are just, uh, yeah, I mean, very, uh, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to reach with them emotionally. Mm. They could be very, uh, you yeah. know, if you say something emotional, that just, it's mm. not uh, mm. like a mm. priority yeah. for them. So how do we... Uh, how do we reach out to such people? See, Say you have like a very, mm. Uh, mm. you know, uh, somebody you're dealing with business-wise and he's a very tough person mm. who mm. you can't really talk about, you know. So what would you do to reach out to them other than telling him that you're going to achieve your goals Nobody. and everything? But if it's something mm. in terms of emotional intelligence, mm. what can we do to deal with yeah. Normally, the, the, the general... And I'll, I'll close up now. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it was, bye it was bye. a pleasure. Bye-bye. Um, so basically, dealing with difficult people or dealing with different people, I won't call them difficult. I mean, yes, it will be difficult for uh, if you're different from them. Um, thing, the general rule normally is you have to adapt and try to synchronize with the person's type and person's personality. You try to um, uh, find out what this person is like what this person like how does this person operate and basically reach out and communicate with them in their own style uh, there's something that we teach the VAK learning styles the visual auditory kinesthetic learning styles and we find that most people are one of these three learning styles so you try to find out for example visual people they normally talk fast they're, uh, they move fast they're, uh, they're very active they're very loud um, and once you tell them something, they already see it in the mind. They use a lot of visual language. Um, auditory people, they information based. They 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 like to have more details. They talk moderately. They're not too fast, not too slow. But they want information. If you want to motivate them, feed them information. Visual people, if you want to if you want to work with them, you tell them do this. They'll just go immediately and do it. If they tell you do this, they'll 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 definitely want you to uh, want to see you out of their way, go uh, on and right on it. Um, while kinesthetic people people are more emotional. They're more uh, 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 they're more uh, touchy feely kind of people, and they tend to be slower. 
Um, the thing is, if I want to motivate one of them, I have to adjust and adapt to their own style. I have to communicate to them in their own style. There are different ways also. We have to understand that uh, there are also uh, different personality types. There's the uh, personality compass technique that we also uh, talk about. And, uh, for example, southern people, they're, they're people who, are, who think about other people's opinion. They think about how other people's peop uh, feelings. And they try to, be, uh, try to consider all that. A more uh, northern people, however, they're they're uh, they're goal objective based. They're logical. They they just want to get right into it. So if you want to really influence one of the uh, the any of the types, you have to really reach out to them in their own style. If you try to reach out to them, and uh, for example, someone who's not very emotional, and you try to talk to them with an emotional language, they'll definitely go like, "What's wrong with you?" So y horses for courses. You try to adjust and be flexible and work with the person in front of you in their own style and that's what will guarantee that you would achieve a better outcome with them very exciting discussion today and uh, uh, very exciting calls we've received uh, with this regards mm -hmm. in fact when we were having uh, the call there was a number of other calls people were calling oh okay yeah <laughs> yeah the only thing is that our program is just for an hour but oh. we definitely look forward to invite you again well, to come and speak because there's for, about uh, active listening that we need mm -hmm. to talk about yes, there is yeah. about the different type of people and the characteristics that are there mm -hmm. and how can you tackle one person to another mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. definitely we're going to bring you again uh, to Inshallah, sit and Inshallah, speak Inshallah. about uh, this forward, Hassan, yeah. Yeah. because you've been very very fascinating mm -hmm. not only for the guests for me personally as well mashallah anything you wish to share before for end of our program today um i was thinking of actually sharing the active listening techniques since we're talking about communicating with others and um there's a quick active li listening technique that people can memorize and uh, use on the daily life it's basically a resemblance of uh, social intelligence as a whole because active listening is not about just listening with your ears it's about listening with your whole totality so this technique was uh, reported by Malcolm gladwell in his uh, book outliers talking about uh, from the example of the knowledge is power program schools in the states and they basically get kids from uh, uh, poor localities p f kids who are struggling and they actually make them turn them into a plus students and part of what they do is they teach them and enforce this technique at school so whenever you're being spoken to you have to apply this technique which is the s slant technique at sta s slant stands for s s l a n t the first s is sit up when being spoken to either sit up or uh, stand up mm -hmm. so you're lim limbering up so mm -hmm. you're not slouching or sitting to the back but mm -hmm. you're showing giving that message of attention and i'm engaged mm -hmm. then you smile smiling gives a message of positiveness all the time the l is for listening so you're listening to the person attentively um then you have the uh, a which is um, uh, ask questions asking questions gives a, a message that you're actually paying attention and you're actually really interested in the topic um a n the n is for nodding your head nodding your head uh, gives a message of acceptance yes, um, and acceptance and mm. i am with you yes i i feel what you feel and i understand what you're saying and the t is for track with your eyes keeping your eyes tracking the person or tracking the movement of the person showing them that you're engaged if you apply this technique it mm, really does magic whenever you're communicating with someone and you can um, see a definitely a difference between how you are with with people your relation with people yeah uh, you'll definitely see a difference and if you if you want to really have fun but be careful when you're doing this at home uh warning you guys try to do the totally opposite and see what happens <laughs> wow. that would get you kicked out so that you will see the effect very fast <laughs> exactly Hassan, thank you very much for joining us today thank on Oman Radio Fan uh, to, uh, to, to speak about social emotional intelligence. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you the very best and success in all that you do, inshallah. Thank you, Tom. Likewise, likewise. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our program for this week. I hope you all had an intriguing and informative uh, time with us. Let us catch up again next week on Tuesday, same time, 5 p.m. for a knowledge session. I'm Tariq Al Barwani, wishing you all a happy and a pleasant week. And yes, and I wish you a happy uh, National Day as well, ahead of a time. Salam alaikum.